WTAJ Sports with Jack Washer. All right, best Saturday of the year. We got state high school football. We got state girls soccer, Penn State football. So much on the line, but we have to start with state girls volleyball. Three area teams with shots at state titles, including Bald Eagle looking for their first in program history and trying to cap a perfect season. Pick it up, first set off the block. Eagles dig it up. Madison Rocky out to Lacey Barnhart, and she goes tool time off the block. Then later in the set, Eagles play some defense. Rocky putting up the block. Bald Eagle takes set one. Move ahead now to the second set. It's Caitlin Smitsko. She's a freshman. She's doing big things in the middle. Set tight late, but then it's Alita Brown. Steps up with not one, but two aces to close out the second set as Bald Eagle takes a 25-23. They could smell that state title. Third set now. Eagles feeling it. Rocky to Grace Hooger, and she smashes it home. And then on championship point, good rally, but Rocky says, I'll take it from here. Bald Eagle captures its first state title in program history, an undefeated season. It's almost too good to be true. Like when I saw Madison go up and tip, I was like, it finally happened. Like I just dropped, like I was like so excited. The kids just uh, play with passion and we have a lot of fun. I think that's the biggest thing of our program. I mean, that's our one, number one rule, have fun. If you're not having fun, get out of the gym, go do something else. And, uh, and because of that, I think you saw a lot of that today. A lot of kids just enjoy themselves. In Class 1A, Berlin taking on Northern Cambria, picking up second set. Berlin down a set, but the Mountaineers come up big at the net. It's Zoe Smith. Check this out. With the huge block, Berlin would take set two to tie it up. Third set now, it's Maggie Hogan, the coach's daughter, putting the Colts on her back. She rips one home right here. And then later in the set, Hogan, this is just unfair, Peyton corners as the Colts take set three. Fourth set now. Colts starting to feel it, and the student section is feeling it. It's Brooke Lieb, tricky, tricky with the dump over on two. And then on match point, Autumn Donatelli seals it for Northern Cambria, their state champions. Number three for head coach Mike Hogan. So, coach, you got to talk to me. For our young team to mature like we did in, in one season, the, the distance we've grown in one season is just incredible. Um, couldn't be prouder of all of them. I mean, it, you know, it's not just one person or two people. I mean, it had, you watch that game out there, a lot of people had to contribute for us to be able to win today. And uh, man, what, what an awesome group of kids. Couldn't be prouder of them. All right, we got two state titles. Let's add a third. Class 2A soccer, Bedford and Lewisburg battling. Game goes to overtime scoreless. Bedford on the attack. And they draw a foul in the box. They get a penalty kick and incepts, well, you know who, Amber Thomas, a PK for the win. And like so many times, Thomas converts, and it's the Bisons. State champs, 1-0 in overtime. What a season for the Bisons. A lot of excitement right there. All right, let's get into some high school football action. First up, a District 6 1A semifinal. It's Bishop Guilfoyle taking on Juniata Valley at Mansion Park. It's supposed to be a home game for the Hornets, but weather wouldn't allow it for the second consecutive week. Pick this one up in the first quarter. Third and goal for BG. It's Keegan Myrick. Runs into a swarm of Hornets, and that made it fourth down. BG would settle for a field goal to take a 3-0 lead. We fast forward now midway through the second. Quinn Zenoble on the keep to take the 6-3 lead for the Hornets. And then right before the half, big play alert. Hunter Johnson gets the pick for the Hornets. And he's going to take it inside the Marauders' 10-yard line. And that sets up Jefferson, a Jefferson Hill field goal. Now it's 9-3 Hornets going into the half. Defense, looking, or defense locking it up in the second half. Under a minute to go in the game. Still 9-3. Hornets with the lead. BG at fourth and goal from the 15. And the pass falls just incomplete as the Hornets pull out an incredible victory. 9-3. They'll play the winner of Northern Cambria and United. Staying at Mansion Park for the night game, Richland and Ligonier Valley for the District 6 2A final. First quarter, LV up 6-0. This bomb from John Caldwell connects with Aaron Tutino, who gets some yards after the catch and dives for the score. That made it 12-0 LV. Early in the second now, Richland gets on the board. Joe Hauser to Trevor Tustin. 
It's now 12-7 going into the half. First drive of the second half, Kellen Stahl converts the Richland fourth down with the score as they go ahead 14-12. Late in the fourth, Richland going to put it away. Stahl jump pass to Kobe Bailey. The Richland Rams are your 2018 District 6 2A champions. Final score, Rams 21, taking down Ligonier Valley, who had 12. The Wall and Popock Buckhorns out of District 2 face Holidaysburg in, of District 6 in the 5A state tournament. First quarter, Holidaysburg's Brady Walters takes a snap and keeps it himself on for the touchdown. Golden Tigers go ahead 7-0. In the second quarter, more of the same. Walters around the left side. He's coming right at us. He goes in for the score 14-0 Holidaysburg. As Holidaysburg goes on to take this one in a route. 31 to nothing. Class 4A. Clearfield and Cathedral Prep. Bison taking on the defending state champs. Bison on the move here. Isaac Rummery to Tay Lynch. Watch this. Lynch bouncing off defenders, rumbling his way into Rambler territory. And then later in the drive, it's Rummery keeping it himself. He's in for the touchdown, but too much Cathedral Prep in the end as the Bison season ends. 55-21 was the final. Wilmington trying to get back to a state title. They're taking on Chestnut Ridge. Opening drive, Wilmington's Cam Merritt. Sweeps to the outside, scores from a few yards out, makes it 6-0 Hounds. Merritt, 39 carries, 290 yards. Incredible day for him. Then Logan Fisser for Chestnut Ridge on the keeper. He's going to take it 60 yards to the house. That's a touchdown. However, Wilmington would score with 20 seconds left in the game, and they win it by a final of 40 to 33. Moving on to Penn State football. We didn't forget about them. Penn State on a business trip in Jersey taking on Rutgers. Pick it up in the second quarter. A ghost throw by Rutgers quarterback Arthur Sikowski picked up by Garrett Taylor and that sets up a scoring drive. Penn State would capitalize Trace McSorry to Pat Fryermuth. That makes it 10-0 Penn State. The Nittany Lions led 13-0 at the half. Second half now, Rutgers gets down to the goal line. And on fourth down, they tried to run the Philly special. But it's a botched play, a botched camera work, whatever you want to go. Quarterback Gio Resigno drops a touchdown. Penn State keeps the shutout alive. Then later in the third, it's a fumble caused by Wisconsin native Robert Windsor. Discount, double check as the Nittany Lions recover. Again, turning turnovers into points. Another touchdown to Fryer move. That is a milestone for Trace McSorley as Penn State gets the win by a final score of 20 to 7. McSorley now the winningest quarterback in school history. 30 wins as a starter. And finally, Penn State Volleyball taking on Northwestern. It's senior night honoring three or four great seniors for Penn State. Brianna Weiskirker here first set. Sets it to Serena Gray out of the middle. It's all Penn State in this one. Then it's Caitlin Horde. Horde on the block in the middle. Nittany Lions never letting the Wildcats get into this one. And then check out this play. Johnny Parker, incredible dig right here. And then we're going to go back to Johnny Parker. Same point. Parker from the back row with the kill. And as Penn State takes down Northwestern on senior night in straight sets. We'll be right back. 